Good day everyone, Complaining Gamer here. What we have here is Linux running RPCS3 natively. More accurately, Pop OS version 19.04 NVIDIA edition updated to the latest kernel as of the making of this video, which is version 5.2.3. Some believe that Linux offers a potential boost of 10 to 20% in FPS over Windows, especially for a CPU like mine, the Ryzen 7 2700X due to the way it handles threads. This has been an incredibly exhaustive process, but I'm confident that the information delivered here is accurate to the best of my knowledge. Does Linux offer better performance over Windows and RPCS3? Let's find out. On screen are the emulator settings which provided the most performance on my system after many hours of testing a wide variety of options. Keep in mind that settings will be slightly adjusted depending on the title being benchmarked. Naturally, across both operating systems, the settings will be near identical to ensure parity, the only difference being audio output using Pulse on Linux and X-Audio 2 on Windows. Precision Boost Overdrive and Core Performance Boost were left on the motherboard default of Auto and all RPCS3 caches are pre-built. You can find my full system specs in the description below. Also, shout out to the fantastic RPCS3 team members, Hula and KD for all their help. Using build 8428, let's jump right into it starting with Sega Rally. In the first test, I'm going to take you to the end of the race to show the lead which Windows took here. Now, before we assume that Windows is the clear winner, I noticed something interesting. Sega Rally seemed to run a little quicker on Windows and not necessarily in performance, but actual game speed. Enough to the point where after three laps of racing, I basically found the results unusable. VBlank was set to 120 to allow us to take the game above its default 30 FPS to a potential 60 to observe maximum performance. The mixture of fluctuations in FPS throughout the race and slight game speed difference created too much distance between the two races to successfully show side by side without constantly needing to splice the Linux footage and that's based on starting both on the exact same frame. The advantage of pushing frame rate is that you get to learn the individual behavior of a game. For example, when not surrounded by AI drivers, the bottom right hairpin of the track seems to be the best performing area. There are several additional elements to consider here. The main one being the player and physical human inputs which will vary from race to race. Naturally, I knew the track well and did not crash, but this human element adds a minor flaw in the testing. Because of this, I prefer in-engine on-rails gameplay, which is completely controlled, eliminating any human input. Sega Rally provides this pre-race, and starting both scenes on the same frame is where I realized that even with identical FPS and frame timing, it still yielded different stages of scene progression, which showed me that in this instance, the difference didn't seem to be performance, but speed, even with a default V-blank of 60 native to the game. Interestingly, this didn't cause an issue with hands-on gameplay. Racing at 30 FPS provided a much more stable result between the OS's. I already knew that both Linux and Windows could maintain 30 frames per second, so my focus turned to frame times and subjective experience. Frame time, also known as frame pacing, is not the same as frames per second, and in many ways is much more important to the experience. A perfect 30 FPS maintains a pacing of 33.3 milliseconds, 60 FPS, 16.6 milliseconds. The interval or space between delivered frames affects how a game feels and plays. If frame pacing is inconsistent, it will ruin the experience so that in that sense, a lower FPS within reason with solid frame times is much better than a higher constantly fluctuating one. Ideally, the two meet for the best gameplay. As you can see, both operating systems are doing a fantastic job of locking in 30 FPS with good timing. Just Linux having a few dips in the beginning. So if technically the numbers are close to perfect, then what's left is my subjective opinion of the experience. This is purely based on feel and can't be quantified, but 
My personal opinion is that Windows delivered the slightly smoother hands-on gameplay here, however Linux was incredibly close. A classic performance killer in all emulators is the presence of AI or NPCs, along with grouped geometry like buildings and towns as well as effects. The alternative can be said for a basic visual environment, which is often less complex to render and emulate and can be demonstrated easily. One of my favourite tricks for pushing fun FPS is to look at the ground or the sky in a game which already has decent performance. Somewhat pointless, but still. Think of the towns and villages versus shrines in Breath of the Wild on Simu and you'll get the idea. Naturally, the most demanding areas to emulate also make them some of the most important for testing. Excuse the interruption people, but I need to show you this. So I have a two monitor setup. They're both 1080p 60Hz. Now, of course, I'm only using one because I only need two monitors when I'm video editing. So it's normal that I would shut one off, of course. Well, you know what? Why don't we jump into some RPCS3 in Linux playing Sega Rally? And let's have a look at the performance, shall we? I'm going to add my own sound effect when... Whoop, whoop. I'm not... That wasn't it. So whoop, there it is, what we're looking for. Let's see when it happens again. Okay, so we're just going to race around the track a little bit till it happens again. So far, so good. Okay, whoop. so there's the sound again. So basically, the issue is micro stutter. And I did all of my testing in Linux in RPCS3 with micro stutter. Only later did I discover that it wasn't supposed to be there. There is a bug with dual monitor setups thanks to nvidia so let me show you the solution we're going to go into display settings we're simply going to change it to join display and now both displays are going to be active the second one is going to be an extension to the first and when we do this the performance is is perfect there will not be another micro stutter so I can just race and race and race, and there will never be one again. So this is courtesy of the way NVIDIA support Linux. So Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, what do you think? NVIDIA, fuck you. Thanks, Linus. Hopefully this might help someone in a similar situation. Initially, Linux will present a few challenges to newcomers, as there's a lot a Windows user might take for granted. For example, there is no Afterburner counterpart for OSD statistics that I could find. Instead, you'll need multiple different applets. Luckily, RPCS3 has its own performance overlay. To ensure close to zero performance loss, the video captures were done on Windows using Shadowplay and OBS using the NVENC GPU hardware encoder on Linux, which reported 2% CPU usage when recording at 1080 60 fps. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption, a title which has become synonymous with RPCS3. VBlank has been set to 120 and SPU preferred threads set to auto. Here we are during the cabin scene after John has been saved by Bonnie and about to be roasted. This in-game section is completely controlled, therefore one I like to use as it's on rails. Throughout the interaction, we see some quite extreme fluctuations in frame rate, with Windows just taking the edge in maximum FPS. Linux, however, appears to deliver higher lows overall, but both OSs are going blow for blow. Windows leading the beginning, then Linux taking over. Between the two operating systems, we see a peak of 53 FPS and a low of 19. Red Dead is a notoriously demanding title, challenging even the best CPUs on the market, overclocked to extremes of 5.3 GHz. A huge reason to be excited for the numbers we're seeing here is because of the release of Ryzen 3000 processors. If my 2700X can achieve this FPS, then any of the new Zen 2 chips will exceed this level of performance. As for gameplay, taking Jaunt for a little spin, I'd give the slight edge to Linux here, but still close. 
Upon leaving McFarlane's farm and direct line of sight with performance killing elements, Linux provides the smoother experience and few extra FPS. Additionally, Red Dead has been much easier to match shot for shot than a racer like Sega Rally. Depending on what is being emulated in a given scene, you can witness extreme swings in performance. With that said, RPCS3 is in quite an incredible position for an in-alpha experimental emulator with its ability to run many titles well on the right system. We can actually discuss and nitpick maximum frame rates depending on the title and not simply be amazed if a game boots at all. There's still a long way to go of course. Next up, Killzone 2 and your chance to request any game that you'd like to see tested. Just leave a comment down below. My game choice here was purely based on familiarity and inspiration from a 60fps gameplay showcase tempting me to try my chance at some of the same titles like Sega Rally. Of late, Killzone 2 has really seen some graphical improvements. In the RPCS3 settings, I've enabled right colour buffers and thread scheduler as this just seemed to work best for me. V-Blank is still set to 120, allowing us to push beyond 30fps. This title is far from optimised but has greatly improved from the past. Straight off the bat, Linux appears to be taking the lead. Remember, for all the tests, RPCS3 settings are near identical except for audio output. Impressively, the commanding lead Pop! OS takes here is one it never lets go, even managing 30fps on the walkway. Whilst these scenes are fun, how do the OS's compare in live action? During combat, the FPS gap is greatly reduced, but not eliminated with Linux still maintaining a small lead which for me means that Pop! OS takes it in Killzone 2. RPCS3 has many titles which are worthy of showcasing, some which are ultra demanding like God of War 3 and others which you can almost guarantee a locked 60fps on like Fight Night Round 4 which to me is a fantastic game. Moving forward and as I do more tests in the future, please feel free to suggest how I may improve what I'm doing here. What would you like to see? 1% and 0.1% lows? Perhaps charts and tables? Either way, we can be sure of one thing. Linux and Pop! OS is absolutely a viable option as a platform for emulation as regards RPCS3. The app image is ready to download straight from their site to then be run natively within the OS. Would you like to see more Linux coverage? Perhaps you believe strongly in the performance of a different distro. Keep in mind that Linux can be tested from a live CD or USB without installation and I can confirm that performance within the OS when just demoing seems equivalent to a full install, at least within RPCS3, so don't be afraid to give it a try. And with that, I'm out. Leave your ideas, thoughts and comments down below. If you'd like to see more, let me know. I'll catch you in the next one.